Good morning, dear saints. Great to see you again today, Thursday, as we gather today. Uh, remember just a couple of announcements as we gather Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock will be the funeral for our brother Mike Sanger. That will be right here in the sanctuary with lunch, lunch afterwards. And then, of course, we gather in worship on Sunday morning, both in person and Facebook Live, with Bible study live streamed in between. I have not announced that very well in church or here on the, the live screen. So keep that in mind. Bible study is always live streamed. We usually start at 9.30 and are done at 10.15, and that gives us time to be ready for the second service. Our word today, God's word for us, in the service of morning for daily prayer, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The psalm for today, for June 18th, Psalm 86, sections of that. Hear the word of the Lord. All the nations that you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name, for you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever, for great is your steadfast love toward me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. O God, insolent men have risen up against me. A band of ruthless men seek my life, and they do not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give me your strength Give strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Show me a sign of your favor, that those who hate me may see and be put to shame because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Another great psalm as the psalmist starts us off right there at the beginning. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. What a great way to start our day. And if you remember... Most of the psalms were written as prayers to God. They were sung as music, but always uh, it's referred to in the Old Testament that the psalm book, the psalms were the prayers of God's people. And here we can truly see it. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Just like our prayers every day, Lord, give us wisdom. Lord, give us strength that we may continue to follow you and continue to glorify your name. And that's what we're going to see in the gospel reading for today. John chapter 17. This is a unique glimpse as we get a picture of Jesus here. We have recorded here what's called Jesus' high priestly prayer. And this is a prayer that our Father, our, our Savior, prayed to his Father in heaven just hours before his death. And it's really unique when we look at this, how Jesus refers to what's going to happen. First, we have to back up a little bit into the catechism. When we talk about Jesus, when we talk about our Savior, we talk about Jesus fulfilling three roles for us, prophet, priest, and king. Now, a prophet in the Old Testament was one who continued to preach and to teach God's Word. And we certainly see Jesus having done that through his life. We see Jesus as priest, as the priest is the one who offers the sacrifices for his people, that he intercedes before them and God. And we see Jesus in that role of priest as he intercedes for us in prayer. But we also see him as king. And as Jesus is king, we are going to see Jesus coronated soon in the Gospel of John. Today is kind of like the assembly before that, but it's not a coronation and a kingdom that we would see 
like we would see if we get a new president. The coronation is the cross, and the king dies for his people. The priest is both the one who offers the sacrifice and who is the sacrifice, and that's Jesus, the one who prays for us. John 17, the first 26 verses, Jesus' high priestly prayer. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all who you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you have given me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them your words that you, have given, that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in this world. But they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost, except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. And these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, and for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory, that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love which you have loved, that the love which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of St. John, the 17th chapter. Well, as you hear Jesus there as he is praying, you can see right away at the beginning, Jesus says, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. And when we think about God glorifying his Son, we might think of something great like Palm Sunday when Jesus went into Jerusalem and the Son glorifying the Father, uh, some great speech that Jesus might make pointing us to God his Father and in, in heaven. But what these verses are pointing to, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, which means the cross. 
glorify your son. Jesus' whole ministry on earth was marching to these moments where he would be the one who would be sacrificed on the cross. Just look how different that looks from our point of view versus the world's point of view. We see Jesus glorified by being faithful to his Father, loving and trusting his Father so much that he would unwaveringly go forward to the cross to his own death, and there he would be glorified. God would be glorified because this is God's plan of salvation. This is forgiveness for us. This is the removal of all of the sin that would separate us from Christ. It's Jesus on the cross. This is the place where God is glorified for keeping his promise to Adam and Eve and his promises to you. This is the place where the Son is glorified because this is the moment when Jesus would take away our sin and do what Adam and Eve did not do and mankind since couldn't do, which is be faithful to God and his promises. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son might glorify you. And as Jesus prays this prayer, he continues to pray for those who are with him, those he knows, the disciples who are there. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me. All of those that are confessing Jesus, even Nicodemus, who we found in chapter 3. Nicodemus would come to Jesus at night, being a Pharisee himself, and Jesus, by talking to him, would have cleared up his false understanding. And Nicodemus would be a follower of Jesus. Nicodemus would be one at the cross who would help take Jesus' body down. Jesus praying for all of those who would come to the knowledge of him as Savior. The Samaritan woman. All of those who would naturally be outside the law of of, um, the Jewish law. All of those who would believe in Jesus would now become the ones that Jesus is praying for. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me. Keep them in your name. Keep them as your children. Keep them close to you and continue to give them faith that they might endure. It's an echo back to what we saw in the Psalms. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. You see all of these things that the psalmist prayed or what Jesus prayed as well. Teach me your way, O Lord, that we may continue to remain in your name, in your word. Holy Father, keep them in your word which you have given to me, Jesus praying for them. And then we get into verse 14. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. I have a prayer that I pray a lot, especially when things are troubling, when things are are not going well. I pray, Lord, come quickly. Come quickly to our earth and rescue us from this valley of tears. And that truly is my prayer and a good prayer that our Lord would come quickly. But Jesus' prayer here is not that he, he separates us and takes us out of the world, but that he protects us from the evil one. And that prayer is prayed so that God's mighty work is done. Jesus will come back, but that's after the last believer that will believe believes. Did you get that? God knows in heaven who that last believer is. And when that last believer finally believes, that will usher in the kingdom where our Lord will return to the earth and take us home to be with him. I pray for that quickly. But our Lord also prays that during that time when we struggle here in the world, that we be protected from the evil one. That, the, that God in heaven would continue to use his Holy Spirit, his word preach, the sacraments given to us to protect us from the evil one. And he goes on to spin that out. He says, they are not of the world, those whom he's prayed for, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. You see, we live in a time right now where everybody believes they have their truth. 
and they don't like this church because it doesn't believe that, and they don't like that church because it doesn't believe that, and they develop their own system of understanding God, and it's not based in the truth. Well, Jesus is clear. Your word is truth. It's the same thing we hear in Timothy. All scripture is breathed out by God. So we want to know how to live and how to act. Well, we turn to his word. As you sent me into the world, Jesus says, I have sent them into the world, and for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also might be sanctified in truth. And as I read the, the, the high priestly prayer, these lines right here I find great comfort in, that Jesus, hours before his death, hours before he would be glorified to his Father in heaven, says this, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Jesus is praying for you, dear saint, that you who have heard this word of Jesus, this word of truth preached into our world, that you who have heard this word and God has given you faith to believe would be protected from the evil one. What a great prayer. Do you see the great love of our Savior? Not only going to the cross, but our, pray, our Savior praying for you that you might be protected from the evil one. He prayed this to our Father in heaven for us so that we may continue to remain faithful to this truth that we might endure in a world that hates us and that we may continue to glorify God our Father and love our neighbor just as he's given us these commands to do. What a great gift to see this prayer that Jesus has given to us. Dear saints, remember, your Savior prayed for you that you would continue to be protected from the evil one. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, our catechetical review, looking at this great prayer that our Lord has prayed, will draw us back to the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, the introduction. Our Father, who art in heaven. What does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true Father and that we are his true children, so that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him as dear children ask their dear Father. Just as Jesus prayed for us, dear saints, so we have the confidence, the joy, like we heard right there at the beginning of the psalm, to go to our Father. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that he might rule and direct us according to your will. Comfort us in all our temptations and afflictions. Defend us from all error and lead us into all truth that we, being steadfast in faith, may increase in all good works and in the end obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, remember tonight at Divine Shepherd at 6.30, we are offering faith builders a Bible study for everyone, but especially for those who are new to Divine Shepherd or new to the Christian faith. It simply walks through who we are in Christ, what the Word says about us, what the Word says about God, and how we always are so privileged to receive His good gifts. 
6.30. If you would like to come and join us, just shoot me a text or call the church and let me know you're coming so we can have material for you. And if it doesn't work for tonight, it will go on for the next six or eight weeks. We'd love to have you join us. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.